Whether you're new to sim racing or a seasoned veteran, there's always one question that remains constant, and that's how do I get faster? And if you're like me, then you'll know that there's nothing more frustrating than practicing lap after lap, only to find that you're still seconds slower than the fastest drivers. But thanks to the Coach Dave Delta app, it's now easier and simpler than ever to reduce your lap times. And today, we'll show you how to do it. Now, if you're thinking that Coach Dave sounds a little different today, then you're right. I'm Alex K, and I've teamed up with Dave to bring you more helpful sim racing content. And in this video, I'll be showing you the steps that I take to get my lap times within one second of the pros just by using the Delta app. So the way that the app works is that it analyzes your laps in your chosen simulator and then gives you the information that you need to understand where and how you're losing time during a lap. Now, the basic process is that first you choose your desired track and car combination. You'll then be provided with a specifically tuned setup for your chosen car, which has been made by some of the fastest drivers in the game. The app then provides you with a reference lap and the data for that lap, which has been set by the same driver using that exact same car and setup. So for this example, we'll be using the Toyota Hypercar at Circuit of the Americas on the Le Mans Ultimate Simulator. Now, Coda is one of the most difficult tracks to learn and become fast at due to how technical a lot of its corners are. So it's a great test to see how much time we can gain using the app. So loading up the Coda reference lap in the app, we can see that the reference time is a 150.5. And our goal today is to get within one second of this lap time. Now the first thing we do is click the hot lap button, which gives us a video of the lap being performed so that we can get a general idea of where the braking points and race line are. Once we're ready, we head into the car setup menu in game and select the setup for the car, which has been automatically loaded for us by the app. And then we head out on track to set our initial lap. Once we take a few laps to get used to the track, we set an initial lap time of 155.1, which as we can see is still 4.6 seconds slower than the reference lap. So there's a lot of time to make up here. Now heading back into the Delta app, we see a lot of information which we'll explain. First in the middle of the screen, we see a map of the track as well as a line with a blue circle, which represents our car and its position on the track at any given time. Then underneath that, we see an overview box. What this does is it allows us to view a replay of the lap we just set, and as we drag our mouse across the box, you'll see our car move on the map accordingly. Now just above that, you'll see two identical sections, one blue and one yellow, with various bars. The information on the left in blue represents what our car is doing at any specific point during our lap, with the green and red bars showing throttle and brake inputs, as well as what gear and speed we're at, and finally what our steering input is. Then you'll see all of the same information on the right side of the screen in yellow, and this represents the data from the reference lap. Now the point of this is it allows us to see what we're doing compared to the reference lap at any given time, so that we can identify our mistakes and replicate what the driver in the reference lap is doing as closely as possible. So let's use turn one as an example, and we want to focus on two things here, which are the line that we take and our braking point compared to the reference lap. First, we'll take off the brake and throttle colors so that we can see just the racing line, and remember that the blue line represents our lap and the yellow dotted line represents the reference lap. Now we can already see our first mistake is that we're braking for the corner far too early because at this point we're already using the brakes fully but the car in the reference lap hasn't even started to touch the brakes yet. Then as we enter the corner you can see that the car in the reference lap is still traveling nearly 30 kilometers faster than us which means that we've used the brakes for too long and we've overslowed the car. Then as we turn in for the corner we see that we haven't turned the car in early enough and finally, as we exit the corner, we're going way too wide when we should be keeping a tighter line through this bend. So all of these mistakes put together have already caused us to be half a second slower than the car in the reference lap. And now we know what we're doing wrong for the first corner. We need to brake later and for less amount of time. We need to turn the car in for the corner earlier. And then finally, as we exit the corner, we need to stay to the right and keep a tighter line. So now we attempt another lap and really focus on doing these things in the first corner. And this time as we exit the corner, we're already three tenths faster than our previous lap. Then with a few more corrections, we set a new fastest time of 153.6, which is almost 1.5 seconds faster than our previous lap. Now let's compare what we did differently in turn one. First off, you can see we break much later than the initial lap and carry more speed into the corner, which gains us two tenths of time. Then as we exit the corner, we stay to the right and keep a tighter line, which gives a total time gain of three tenths. Now the process is really that simple. And what we do next is for each corner, we make the same comparison in the app to identify what we're doing wrong. And after cleaning up some more mistakes, we managed to get our lap time down to a 152.6, which is now 2.5 seconds faster than our initial lap time. Now we're still about one second off reaching our goal of a 151.5, but there's some other helpful tools we can use in the app to help us narrow down where we're losing that time. So looking at the lap overview bar, we can see a big difference in time where our blue line is fairly separated from the yellow reference line. So to focus on this section, we can click and drag over that area to take a closer look. 
Now we can see that this time loss is happening during the fast S's section of the track. And as we move along the timeline from the entry of that section all the way to the breaking point of the hairpin, we've already lost 1.1 seconds of time. And this is where we can make the most improvement on our lap. Now to help us understand exactly what we're doing wrong in that section of track, you'll see we have these red buttons that light up as we move through the overview. And these are the AI Auto Insights. Now what these insights do is they identify where we make a mistake compared to the reference lap and then explain what we did wrong, similar to how I explained the mistakes we made earlier in turn one. When we click on one of these insights, it brings up the insights menu, which then explains in detail where we went wrong. And each mistake is color coded to match with a circle on the map so that you can see exactly where you made that specific mistake. For example, in the entry to the fast S's, the auto insights tells us that we break too early and too hard compared to the reference lap. This then causes our entry speed to be too slow. And we can also see that during the entry, we need to place the car more to the right in order to enter the next series of corners with a straighter line so that we can get back on the throttle earlier. This mistake leads to a snowball effect, which increases our time loss through this fast section and is explained in each of these insights. So now we use what we've learned from the Auto Insights tool to try and fix our mistakes in this section of the track, and here's the result. Now the first thing we do is avoid taking so much curb on the left because in the previous lap, taking that much curb caused the car to bottom out, which cost us time. We also use a lot less brake pressure based on the advice from the Auto Insights, and you can see we're already off the brakes before we even reach the corner apex. We then enter the next section by placing our right side tires over this yellow curb on the right because it allows us to enter in a straighter line so that we don't need to turn the wheel as much. We then tap the brakes lightly to help the car rotate and meet the next apex which then helps us open up the entry for the next corner. Now we can see that with this new lap we're now only 4 tenths slower than the reference lap by the time we reach the braking point for the hairpin which means we've managed to gain 7 tenths of time compared to our previous best lap. Then by the end of the lap, we set a new best time of 151.4, which is now less than one second within the reference lap time of 150.5, which means we've reached our goal for this test. Now we can gain even more time by repeating this process and basically treating it like a mini game, where the goal is to remove as many of the red insights as possible, which in turn allows us to get our lap time as close as possible to the reference. Then by the end of it, you have a situation like this session at Spa, where there's only one tenth of a second between our time and the reference time. Now today we covered the very basic functions of the Delta app and there's plenty more tools within the app that offer a wealth of information to help you understand more about your driving and how you can find more time on the track. So check out the links in the description for more info. Now if you've got any questions about the Delta app then be sure to leave them in the comment section below and as always thanks for watching.